title of this session is the mind-body connection. I want to talk about the reverse, the body-mind connection. Because while it's true that mind does have control over matter, we are forgetting something very, very significant in this culture. Because there is a thing called body over mind. Has anyone ever had a stomach virus or food poisoning? Anyone where they were really totally white? Okay, fine. Now, in that condition, can any of you have negotiated a mortgage, a lease? Did any one of you go to work under that condition? Because the mind is powerful, all powerful, right? We all forgot about the body. But if you are in that state, how can you think? How can you perform? How can you live? Now that's an extreme case, of course. Now perhaps on a more subtle level, though, the same thing happens when we go for that cheeseburger, when we go for those French fries. What goes in is what comes out in the form of physical strength and mental capabilities. We've become such a cerebral society. Our children are learning computers at earlier and earlier ages and they are giving up exercise and sports at earlier and earlier ages. That's a serious price to pay because once the body starts to break down, the mind goes with it. Mood and movement are interrelated. Now, the less we move, the less we can move. Does that make sense? The more you move, the more you challenge your body, the more your body can handle. The more sedentary you become, the more effort is required just to even walk. If you condition yourself, if you force yourself to go past your comfort zone, comfort zone, we know about that in business, we know about that in achieving goals, but we need to understand and apply that when it comes to physical activity. Now the thing is, we always need to know that we were designed to move. That's the human body. And it's remarkable the changes that occur as you move. I want everyone just to stand up for just one second and just do this inhaling, reaching up to the ceiling and bring it back down. Usually I, I bring it out, but you're too close to each other. And again, take a deep breath in and exhale. And right in your place, just walk for about 10 seconds. Anyone feeling worse? <laughs> no? Okay. You've been reawakened. Exercise is that. It's a reawakening. It's like magic. And I studied this in school. I understand the theories. I understand the science behind it. But to experience it, it's indescribable. So I would always suggest to not even think about it. Just do it. Just do it. That is all it takes. Don't get stuck in the paralysis of analysis. How many women have heard someone say, oh, I still wear a size 6. I used to wear a size 6 and I still wear a size 6. I still wear a size 10, whatever the case. I have news. And please, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Were you here yesterday? No. no all right, but she, she's reading my mind. Garment manufacturers <laughs> over the last 50 years have been scaling down the size measurements to a point where size 12 50 years ago is now size 6. So Marilyn Monroe wore a size 12. She's a size 12. But if a woman wears size 12 today, she will not look like Marilyn Monroe. I <laughs> guarantee you that. So go by tape measurements. If you have clothing that's old, that you've worn years ago, hold on to it. Use that as a gauge. Because the size won't matter. See that? Size doesn't matter. <laughs> now, when I say no time, or when I hear no time, I always ask people, do you watch TV? And they'll say yes. How many people here watch TV? OK. My philosophy is that if you don't have the time, then you have to start to make the time. And if you don't know how, then you have to start to plan. And this is what I tell my clients. If you plan, then you can strip it off and you'll be fit. Now, it takes a little bit of planning. But look at this. Did that take much time? And 
As far as money, how much do you think this costs? A little bit of rope jumping. Now, how much is this costing? $5? $7? Just to do a little bit of exercising, get the blood pumping? Just stop running. A little, too much exercise still? How about a little bit of power walk? A little bit of power walk. That's all it takes. Have one of these to play with if you're bored with walking. This is a medicine ball, not a beach ball. You could do abs like this. You could do it the other way. Here's another ab exercise. Does anyone not have time? <laughs> Was that for the strip or for the exercise? <laughs> Takes 20 minutes to reach a fat burning zone. Now, you, it's not like a switch just pops in, like, oh, 20 minutes, now I'm burning fat. It's not like that. And people think, oh, well, how, you know, what, what time? I only did 18 minutes, what am I going to do? I didn't reach the fat burning zone. It's not like that. <laughs> You hear a lot of things in the gym. <laughs> what happens is when you first start working out, you're burning carbohydrates, which is why we need carbs. You're burning carbs, you're burning a little bit of fat. And as you reach that 20 minute, 15 or 20 minute market, depending on the intensity, you then reach a point where you're burning more fat than carbs. You're depleting your carbs. We don't have a lot of carbohydrates. There's no better way to get rid of jet lag. So when you go back home, you hit the ground running. Isn't that what you have to do anyway? But how could you hit the ground running if you're kind of like stumbling along from jet lag? But if you come back from having kept up some fitness program, you'll be back ready for more action. And that will entitle you to more raises and more advancements in the long run. Top CEOs, look at the condition they're in. A lot of them are lean. A lot of them work out. A lot of them play racquetball. And it's not that if you play racquetball, you're going to become a CEO. But the ones who become CEOs tend to be fitter. So it does tie in with your economic well-being after all. When people say no money, well then think of it as an investment. An investment in you. Because when you take care of you first, then you could help those around you. Your financial well-being as well as your physical well-being and mental. You need to be realistic with your goals. Don't ever expect to lose five pounds in the next hour. It's amazing with these diets, South Beach diet. You're going to lose 14 pounds in just 10 days. And it'll only be around the waistline. Two problems. A, we should never lose more than two pounds a week. And there is no such thing as spot reduction. You can't just lose it here. The body will lose it where it chooses to lose. So do it gradually. Let your body adapt metabolically. It's more healthy. It's longer lasting. Forget the fad diets. When you ask me if we should lighten up on the intensity, I don't think so. Because if Bob did, if Bob did, he'd be in a wheelchair possibly right now, or a rocking chair anyway. Now this for me is inspiration. When you have someone 50, 60, 73, 85. What's our excuse? Age is only a number. And as long as we can remember that, then we can challenge ourselves with the intensity. We, we should make the time. We need to make the time. And in doing so, you will improve the mental processes. You will improve your emotional sense of well-being. You, it's been documented. It's been proven. And I've just shown you four people if you want to call it aging, it's aging gracefully. But as far as I'm concerned, they each reverse their aging to a great degree, at least by 20 years. So let's just remember the programming into our lives. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Have a good, healthy life. Thank you.